All right, so our next talk is from the wonderful Tracy Nichols. Um, a pleasure to have her on board in the project. And actually, she has supported both me and Matt, um, not only in logistics for this project and recruiting half of you here, but also um, emotionally. <laughs> She's looked after us well. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so apologies for the delay. Don't uh, mistake that for anticipation about a fantastic lecture. Uh, there's been a lot of really clever people here today. I'm not one of them. Um, but I am going to talk you through about how the East of England feel about FEM feedback and what that could look like in terms of our workforce and what it might mean for us. Uh, so reflection's not new. Um, and I think we talk a lot about using reflective practice. Um, and actually, what we, what we think about is how... Um, how we think other people should use reflective practice and actually it's more about ourselves. Um, so uh, really keen to just talk about the benefits of doing reflective practice. So of course it's going to make you more self-aware. Um, knowing what you're good at and again what you're not so good at um, gives you a greater confidence to know what you need to work on and if you're good at something it helps you um, with your confidence and to be able to do those good things again, maybe in different situations, not necessarily repeating them, but applying them to different situations. A greater understanding of your practice. So the more you reflect, the more you use that as a reflective muscle, um, the more you'll understand what works in those different situations. So we know that no two chest pain jobs are the same, no two RTCs are the same. So how do we use that reflection? to apply to those different patients to do things that are slightly nuanced and slightly different. Um, and improving in your own area of practice, so using your strengths um, and develop where you feel professionally you are not as strong. And that's, that's, you know, that's standard practice. So one of my other hats is I'm vice chair of the College of Paramedics. And in 2013, the PEEP report was published. Um, it was uh, commissioned and delivered by uh, Professor Mary Ludgrove. And within the contents there, it said, the process by which students and qualified paramedics receive timely feedback for clinical decisions should be improved. So in terms of some of the other things that that report said was about um, having a degree entry profession. It's about taking pa the paramedic profession on its journey. But it recognised then how important feedback was to, to paramedics and to student paramedics and everybody who works within the pre-hospital field. Some of that is down to um, leadership and how we allow people to receive that feedback. But it's about um, who is a leader in the ambulance service. There's a traditional hierarchy, which is, which is mostly a nonsense, to be fair. But I, what, what I was reflecting on recently was a conversation I had with a, with a young, newly qualified paramedic from Northern Ireland. Um, and he spoke to me about a job, and, and I'd heard him talk about uh, this job to other people, and I, and I, I hadn't heard all the details, um, but it was clearly bothering him because he kept telling people about it. And the job was that he had gone to um, a, a, a woman in labour. Uh, he had no more details than that. And when he got there, uh, he was told the woman was delivering triplets. Um, each of those babies was delivered and delivered flat. And then the mother hemorrhaged. He's a newly qualified paramedic, the most senior person on that job. Now, you talk about cognitive overload. There it is. But do you know what? He stepped up and he led that job. Now, we've wrapped some support around him because I don't think his own organisation did that particularly well. But he became the leader. Every one of you becomes a leader on that job. It's not about the hierarchy. It's about you. And FEM Feedback is about wrapping around that leadership and understanding how you need to develop as a leader by using that reflection and getting that really important feedback. And this is about a collaboration. This is about a system working together that isn't even really a system. There's a system developed here, which is fantastic. So what is the art of the possible for reflection? Um, 
good quality care does take time to deliver. Now, I'm not telling you any secrets within the East of England to know that we've been under a huge amount of scrutiny for a long time about our quality and safety. But it's been kicked up and down the road by a number of people, external regulators, and we've got outstanding care that our clinicians give. That's evidence in our CQC report. But how do we care for the carers? I think I'd probably say pretty poorly at the moment. Um, quite often our staff will reflect when they're off duty because they don't have time to do it when they're at work and that's simply not good enough. What I would say to you all as clinicians is continue to be curious, be restless, be disruptive, be all of those things because they all help you learn. And as a result of that, we're likely to get better clinical decisions for our patients and the patient care will only improve as a consequence. So with the support of uh, FEM Feedback, we're pleased to announce that we'll be offering debriefer courses in conjunction with the University of Hertfordshire. And we're very pleased and proud to be able to do that. Some of those places will be offered outside of the East of England in support of the ethos of the project. Uh, that FEM Feedback has created. And we will also commit to finding the right way to support the debriefs. So like we stand down our trim debriefs at the moment, we are committed to stand down for FEM Feedback because it is important and we will do that. So learning and not blaming. Um, this is, uh, I find when I'm looking at, at these topics, I go down wormholes, I end up finding um, places that I go off to uh, when, I'm, when I'm researching something. But some of the stuff we've talked about at the college is why do, why do more paramedics refer themselves to the Health and Care Professions Council than any other allied health profession? Um, and we take the criticism really badly. We make a mistake and we go straight to our professional body and say, our regulatory body and say, uh, we've made a mistake, hands up, we need you to investigate us. And even the HCPC have said, why is this happening with this profession? We're a national shortage profession. We've got paramedics hemorrhaging out of the NHS. Some of them aren't even going to, to different health organisations. Some of them are taking massive career changes. And most of that is probably to do more with burnout than it is with pay, um, in my opinion. But we have to, we have to take notice of that. Um, at the East of England, we have a variation in clinical practice policy, which means that if there is an error that's made, a mistake, we are humans, we're not robots, um, what we do is constructively sit down as a panel with you and discuss those incidents. That's a form of feedback, but it feels very punitive, even though it's not meant to be. Um, FEM feedback gives us the, the opportunity to do things a little bit differently there. Um, we, I don't think it does go far enough in terms of how we might uh, evolve the, the uh, clinical variations process. Um, in terms of our culture, we've got a long way to go. Um, we know that that takes time and we want to strive for excellence uh, in our culture, but we must deal with mistakes in a really humane way um, and we have to show kindness. And kindness is a really big thing for me about how we're kind to ourselves, how we're kind to others. Um, and for those of you that know Dave Halliwell as well, who, who, who works for iSimulate, it, it's a really big message for us and, and I think we need to show that kindness a lot more, which I'll come to later. So, the publications um, about that you need to learn and not blame has come very much from a doctor-led um, place, but applies to all of us in healthcare. So, finding out the truth um, and being honest about that is not enough. It must be accompanied by learning and by change for the better. There is nothing in this presentation that isn't driving us towards why FEM feedback is so great and why we have to embrace this. And I know there's other ambulance services in the audience. Other feedbacks are available, as they would say in advertising, but this one is the best. <laughs> who is um, you know, a, a, a great man, um, spoke about why we, we feel that we need to blame ourselves when things go wrong. And he spoke about this kind of mountain analogy where um, you find an impasse 
and people sit there and wait for change to come to them. It, it, it will not work. You need to be the change. You need to try, if you tried to break through the mountain, that wouldn't work. So if someone looks at you and says, you're not doing a very good job, Grace's throwaway comment from the doctor, maybe it was you that caused it. Don't feel ashamed by that. That wasn't kind, that was incivil, and that's not, that's not right. Um, however, what you do know, what you've learned from that immediately, is you're not gonna take that path again. You're gonna take another path. Suzette Woodward uh, from Sign Up to Safety has done a huge amount in terms of patient safety. And my reflection is patient safety is like a game of Jenga for me. So I sit on the board of a huge NHS organisation and I'm responsible for keeping patients safe. So if you think about a game of Jenga, it is a, a structure, a whole structure, which the game encourages you to take pieces of that structure out until the game falls over. So I'd ask you, at which point is that structure unsafe? It's unsafe from the beginning. Patient care is unsafe from the beginning by its very nature. At what point does it become unsafe? It's not when the last piece comes out. There's a, there's a build-up, a cascade of when it becomes unsafe. And Suzette Woodward um, talks about uh, things that would be nice to do if you had time, like reflecting. We put it in that category of, let's do it at some point if we've got the opportunity to do it. It's an absolute necessity. <coughs> she also talks about incivility, blaming, shaming, sanctioning. If people are rude to one another, and I don't know if any of you have seen the Civility Saves Lives campaign, it actually portrays how that affects clinical practice, and I'd encourage you to have a look at that um, if you haven't seen it. But it increases your cognitive load if people are rude to you, and therefore you are likely to go on and make poor decisions as a consequence of that. So another reason to be kind. Um, Suzette's worked with Mersey Care Foundation. There is a 27-minute video if you want to have a look at how an organisation has taken itself from perpetual failure into shifting its mindset about being kind to one another and rethinking patient safety, which is what we're going to do at EAST. Um, so we are the change. We can't sit there, like Don Berwick says, and wait for change to happen. We are the change. We have to make the change and we have to want to continue to make it to make better improvements for our patients and for the people. We owe it as a legacy for the people coming through behind us. So my last couple of slides really are about kindness. So it is a choice. You can choose to be kind. You can choose not to be kind. You can pull out a chair for someone, hope, open a door for someone. That's your choice. You can choose not to. Um, but working collaboratively with a shared purpose is kind. The whole FEM feedback team here that have put this together have been kind and generous in including people and offering people the opportunity to continue this, this revolution of feedback um, that we're here to celebrate today. So you have a choice, and I make no apologies for the last slide, you have a choice to be kind. You can choose whichever button you like, <laughs> but every time you have a choice. You can be a dick, you can not be a dick. So, FEM feedback, is the way forward for us. We are absolutely committed as a service to continue to support this, to continue to support superstars like Grace and Matt and all the team. Um, and I hope you can just be kind to one another for the rest of the day at least until you're next on shift. So thank you.